Hey friend, nice to see you back here on the channel. Today I want to talk all about resumes, specifically creating an interactive resume. And here's a resume that I recently put together, built completely code free on Editor X. And I'm going to walk you through how I created this interactive resume. But before we jump into it, a note on resumes. Obviously, a resume is vital to have if you're applying for your next or first design job. They give the recruiter a really good impression of who you are, what your skills are, and what your work experience is. Having your resume as a PDF is obviously essential. When you're gonna be applying for jobs, often you'll have to upload a document. And so I always recommend having your resume available as a PDF. Something else I also recommend is having that PDF available as a download on your website. That way, if a recruiter or someone stumbles upon your site and is interested in working with you, they can have access to that resume. However, in addition to a PDF, it can also be really effective to have an interactive version of your resume. Something that's living, live and breathing on your website. Not only does this give an extra good impression, but if somebody stumbles upon your website, they can go and see your work experience without having to download anything. It's also really helpful if someone wants to send a link of your resume to someone else. Maybe they want to refer you or send you along to a recruiter. If you have a link that has your interactive resume there, it's a great impression. And it's also nice to have this living, breathing place that you can update over time. A few months back, I showed you a new no code tool called Editor X, which is what I've used to build this interactive resume. As a reminder, Editor X is a no code visual website builder with flexible grid control and breakpoints. You can create full on interactive and customized websites without ever touching a line of code. And Editor X also gives you complete freedom and control as to the design and look of your website. So in that video, I showed you the basics of Editor X and how to get started. Now we're going to get a little bit more detailed into how I actually built this interactive resume. Resume. Here's a look at my website and you can go and take a look at this for yourself at femke.design slash resume. So here at the top section of my website, you can see there is a bit about me. I have links to my social accounts and then a list of jobs I've had or projects I've run. So this kind of encompasses all of my job experience. And you can see here if I load the website, there are some animations, things are sort of fading in nicely. And I also have this button here with a link to download my resume and it's fully responsive as well. So if I adjust the width of my browser now, you can see that it works at like a tablet view and then also at a mobile view. So let's take a look at how I built this over on Editor X. Here's my website in Editor X. And as I scroll, you'll see all the same content that you just saw on the live website. And all of this has been built mostly by using sections and then having containers within a section. And then inside the container is all of my content. You can also test how it appears on different breakpoints. So if I switch to tablet view, I get a sense of that. And then again, down to mobile. So switching back here to the desktop view to ensure that my content scales down well for different breakpoints, I've made sure that all of the elements elements have been set to fluid. And this way the elements will resize depending on the width of the viewport. And I've also used here percentages for widths so that depending on the size, this content will always be 90% of the width of the container. I've also set here a maximum width of 1200 pixels. That way, if you look at it on a really, really large screen, like my computer, for example, I have a really big monitor. It's not going to span width to width the entire screen. I've set that maximum width so that I have some nice breathing space on the side. Within this container, you can see that I've also used a grid and you can set up a grid in any container and adjust it how you like. So if I adjust this grid, you can see there's a few different layout options and I can also edit this grid to customize it to appear how I want. So here I can actually adjust the gaps or the margins between the columns and rows. You can also see that I've kind of almost got like two thirds, one third grid layout going on here where I actually adjusted the width of this to be sort of two fractions because I wanted this content in here to span two columns. And then this one is just one column where it's got a really nice two thirds, one third kind of layout within this container, I've also organized some of my content into stacks. So if we look over here, this is a stack with a lot of different elements inside of it. And a stack allows you to control the elements within the stack. So you can control things like margin, padding, spacing, things like that. And you can also apply things like interactions to a stack. Now you can see here that my stack is in the second row and the second column. And in order to set it in this position, I just open up the grid area and you can see that this content is set to start at column two and end at 
column three, which is basically the next invisible column and start and end at row two and three. So for example, if I set this to column one, then you can see that it's spanning now from column one to all the way to the end. Instead, if I set this to row one and ending at row three, you can now see that the content has moved up, that it's beginning at the top of row one and will span all the way down to the end of column two, AKA column three. If we scroll down now to the job experience section, each of these live within a container. And you can see that this container also has a grid that I adjusted so that it has the right layout that I want. However, I also have a container within this container. So this list of content here actually exists within its own container. And you can see I've applied a two by two grid to this individual container. So you can kind of nest containers and grids basically within each other. And that's how I've been able to achieve this layout. This job experience section is repeated multiple times throughout the page. And I could do that by right clicking on one of these sections and duplicating it. However, However, a smarter way to do this is to actually turn one of these sections into a design asset. A design asset is like a reusable component. So I can click on an entire section here, right click and save as design asset. Once I do that, the design asset will actually show up and be saved here in the sidebar menu. And I can just drag and drop this entire section into my project and it adds it really easily just like that. This design asset is available for anyone who's working on this particular project. So I could place this design asset on any other pages that I might have on this website. However, I can also send this design asset to a design library. And that way the design asset is then accessible across any project within my Editor X account. Let's take a look now at typography. So you can head over to the theme manager here and see a list of all of your textiles and themes that you've created. And this has been really helpful for me to keep my text consistent and styling across my website. And it's really, really easy to change styles if you like. And let's say that I wanted to make changes to a textile. I can really easily do that by clicking on one of the text boxes and then editing the style as I like. And then in the theme drop down here, I can just click update theme and it will actually push that text update styling that I made back to the global theme and adjust that across all of the instances of that textile across my website. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I highly recommend having a downloadable version of your resume. So here you can see I've added a button here and this was super easy to add just over in the quick add panel. You can drag and drop a button and then style it as you wish. So if I head on over to the design panel here, you can see I've changed its background to a certain color. You can also add things like borders, corner radius, shadow, and you can also adjust the text if you want to. I've also then added a link to this button because it is a button. And when clicking on the button, I've set it to link to the resume that I created, which is just sitting in a Google Drive. If we go back and take a look at my live website, you'll see that when you load the website, there are some animations and interactions going on. The heading kind of fades in, this illustration comes in, and as you scroll down, the job experience actually fades in as well. And this is really easy to set up in Editrix with their interactions. You can add interactions to a whole section, a container, or even to an individual element if you like. I've added some interactions to some of these big text elements, and I've also added interactions to entire stacks. If we look at this stack, for example, you can see that I've added an interaction here or an animation. And if I click on this, you can see there's a lot of preset animations that you can choose from. If you hover over them, it'll preview it for you. I've chosen a nice simple fade in, and then you can also customize it. So I've set a duration of half a second, and then I've set zero delay because I want it to animate in as soon as you arrive on the website. There's also this nice toggle here where you can choose if you wanted to only animate the first time someone arrives on your website or every time they're like loading that page. For the job experience section, I've added the interaction to the entire container. So you can see here, I've got a float in animation for these. And I can also choose the direction in this case, I want it to come up from the bottom. And I've set some slightly different durations and delays because I want these sections to kind of animate and fade in as the user scrolls down throughout the site. So that's a look at how I've created this interactive resume in Editor X. You can see that there's a lot of customization options and you get complete control over how you want your site to interact and also the design of your site. The team has been working hard on improving the product a lot. I think even if you go and look back at my video from September 2020, there's already been a lot of changes and improvements to the product since then. So the team are really actively working on making this a great product for you. All right, friend, and that is Editor X and creating
creating an interactive resume, it is totally free to get started on Editorix. And if you do end up creating an interactive resume, pop a link to it in the comments below. I'd love to check out your site. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in another video. Bye.